testing, testing. Let's see here. Hi there. Hi everybody. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Um, my name is Cynthia Kirana and um, today I will take you around my garden and um, my studio and show you bits and pieces of my I figured we could take a look at a little bit of the garden. So post-quarantine and pre-quarantine, that's where I spend my time. Hi, Yenting! Um, here are these beautiful, luscious <laughs> rosemary bush. Um, let's see here. Also, I've been trying to restore my greenhouse, so it's still a little bit in process there um, and this little guy here they're green onions kind of nutty huh? they're as tall as I am almost and that's my puppy Pierre 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 say hi <laughs> hello Thank you everybody for joining us. Um, thank you Mangano Museum of Fine Arts for um, supporting this program and for inviting me to be a part of it. Um, if you have Instagram and you haven't followed me yet, uh, my Instagram name is see.in.tia is cntia. And um, you can follow me there, um, behind the scenes photos and things like that will be posted. And any questions from the Q&A that we didn't get through today will be also posted there. Um, so here are some zucchinis. Uh, I don't know if you could see it. It's growing something in there. And my tomatoes, um, most of my flowers has shift. Um, oh, I'm trying to grow these uh, Japanese watermelon. One little dude. Or do that. <laughs> um, what else? Okay, I think, I think that's all for the garden. <laughs> lots of things to clean up around the house. Um, my tulips has all bloomed, so now they're just kind of happy and trying to preserve their en energy for next time. So this is my home here. Okay, I don't think he wants to get in. Um, every morning, I start my day here, actually, uh, surrounded by artworks from friends, from um artists i admire and things like this so this is my morning desk let me just switch the camera view here my morning desk this is where i write my daily haiku and um, thoughts of the day um, reflections from the evening before um, and um, it's basically written in this little tiny white book. Um, a lot of my um, show has been postponed uh, for the summer, so I'm trying to keep myself busy. And uh, I learned how to saddle stitch. It's, uh, hmm, the craftsmanship there is not quite spectacular, but uh, <laughs> this is the first try. Um, and this is where I jot down my ideas pretty quickly. Uh, 
Ah, something fresh cut flowers. Laura, this is for you. <laughs> something beautiful from the garden into the house. You know, I feel really bad whenever I cut flowers from my garden because, you know, once you cut the flower, they are essentially dead, right? Um, here's my bookshelf. Um, I design and my significant other helped build. Um, here's Pierre. Um, I do have a large chalkboard. I don't usually use them often. Mostly my friends will come and um, sketch out their ideas or write lovely messages, um, things like this. So since quarantine, I've been kind of taking over my home. Um, this is a living room that I turn into my gallery slash studio. I've also turned my um, garage into my studio, but at the moment they're full of boxes from last year's shows and uh, I haven't got to it yet. <laughs> so, hi there, hi. Um, here are a few pieces from uh, a show in Southeastern Missouri, uh, museum called Chris Museum um, and these works are supposed to be uh, shipped to the Wiregrass Museum but um, our show has been postponed until next year so you got a little bit of a sneak peek here I'm so happy that you all can join us today I know it's a bit early for some of us me too actually I've I almost finished with my first cup of coffee there. Um, let's see what else. Oh, another project is actually this flower piece. I've been documenting this life of a flower since um, May the 2nd. Um, so what I do essentially is taking image daily every morning around this time, the same lighting make sure um, and there it is and um, I've been documenting them since March the 2nd and um, slowly um, you can see time has taken over um, so the plan is to document until all the petals and the leaves are um, detached from its stem and perhaps I'll turn it into a video or um, also print it as a uh, serial kind of photography piece. Uh, let's see, what else? Ah, yeah, I'd like to show you all my eggshells collection. And um, you may be familiar with um, the image on Instagram to promote this this event um, so those are my installation which uh, made from eggshells oh my gosh I'm saying I'm um, way too much right now <laughs> I'm not so used to you know doing this and and um, going live with this and, and all that typically uh, studio time is a quiet time for me um, it's sort of my my sacred kind of temple so so it's really exciting to be able to share it with you all uh, I'm sorry if you see a lot of mess in here though so I've been collecting eggshells since um, oh hey Brandy uh, since 2012 and here are some that hasn't been cleaned quite properly yet so most of these shells come with uh, the filament um, what I do is I would take actually a needle and try to cut through these little filament and sometimes doing that work just fine and and I would typically save this filament to um, to incorporate in like other collage elements or other drawings and things like that um, and you know a lot of people ask me like oh 
wow, you must break a lot of shells. Yeah, I, I do, <laughs> especially in the beginning. But, um, but actually, they are quite strong. So um, when I start doing this and collecting the shells, I didn't really know how to um, create the holes. So I actually, okay, let me see here. So I have to clean the edges just to make sure there are no fracture, things like that. Um, so yeah, in the beginning I use needle and I, you know, I have to puncture them really carefully and yeah, you will hear lots of cracks, but eventually I got really good. And then my friend told me, well, you could have used a Dremel, 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 Dremel. Um, and then, uh, I was like, wait, what, what is that Dremel? Um, so yeah, it's this like needle tool. Um, it's electronic and oh gosh, it went so quickly. So nowadays I use those uh, and it's so much easier, so much faster to poke holes in all of those shells. So once the shells are clean, actually these are my, my pre-clean shells. Um, once the shells are clean, then I turn them over and I poly or collect them because typically they are showing in a much more um, low light, and so poly or collect them um, will create this kind of sheen. This one hasn't been poly or collect, and um, yeah. Let's see, and oftentimes my friends will drop off eggshells for me, like this. <laughs> I call it my eggshells fairy. Oh, hi, Barbara. I should probably check the time. Oh, we're still good. Okay. Um, so eggshells and, um, I guess I'll show you. So this is my, um, recent work still quite unfinished. And Pierre is a bit tired, I guess. <laughs> um, my flat files, the first drawer is essentially my unfinished work um, or work in progress, you can say. I do a lot of embossing, um, such as this, uh, with gold leaf and things like that. Um, Today also I'm going to show you how I make my ink uh, to create these these marks here. Um, some work sample from the past, and these are ink painting on Yupo paper. I really like layering. Um, as you can see here also, so it's cut paper, um, ink on paper, and lots of layers. All right, I'm going to try and see if I could post this into a tripod. But before that, uh, I'll show you another recent piece. This particular one here is um, made out of, I call it my heat drawing. So it's essentially, oh, hi, Donna. Um, it's essentially a drawing made um, with a, like a heat tool. I don't know if there's a particular, it's a wood burning tool. So the way that I create the mark is essentially like leaving it, you know, uh, on the paper, uh, the longer that you leave it on the paper, the darker the marks uh, become. So a lot of my work has to do with time. Even though it's not time-based per se, like when you see video works, um, time is, is not only, you know, uh, a process, but also become the material itself. Uh, here are my other absent present piece and I did a whole series called um, Silver Lining and essentially is a really 
uh, dark acrylic made by this artist called Stuart Sample from the UK. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the feud between Anish Kapoor and, you know, him trying to hoard all the darkest black in the world. Um, so this artist, um, Stuart, <laughs> is a bit more diplomatic, I guess, in a way. Uh, so he created his own version of uh, the blackest black. And um, this is what I use within my painting is the blackest black. Uh, and also the larger painting there. Okay, well, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to chime in. I will try to turn on my computer here. Oh, I don't even know how to watch myself. Let's see. Oh, here it is. I'll click this and, um, and then I can see maybe your comment here. Uh, all right. Okay. So sorry. Close your eyes if you want, but I'm about to, I'm about to attach this phone to the tripod. <laughs> oh, it's not too bad. multidisciplinary artist. So um, what that means is I enjoy creating using different materials, uh, different tools. Um, so my practice span, you know, it's, it's a bit broad. Um, I paint, I draw, I uh, also you can't see. Me. I paint, I draw, I make installations, I create videos, um, I also do photographs, um, but yeah, it, so it, it just depends on the project and, and how, you know, I could sort of present that uh, visual representation. Uh, so with the paintings though, I'm typically very minimal with my medium, um, just like as you see earlier with the eggshells, they are typically um, collected over time. And they are also um, a material that is very close to me and very accessible to me. Um, so with the ink, I make my own ink out of ashes. And um, let me move this to see. Okay, I think you can see. So I've been collecting ashes again since 2000, I don't know, I don't remember, 13 maybe, and um, they're basically this, they're kind of this light gray, um, so my parents, I'm, I'm Chinese Indonesian, and we have, you know, my parents are Christian and Buddhist, so the Buddhist side, they have lots of rituals and things like that. Um, and one of that ritual is actually a, um, a, a prayer. So once a year, they would burn um, gifts uh, to the ancestor. So paper mache clothing or money or you know things like this, and um, to send it to the, the ancestor. And and when my grandparents passed away, I um, I, I I needed a to find a way to communicate with them. And I thought, you know, the way that I could get close to them is by um, perhaps reusing this, these ashes, um, the burnt materials that's been sent to them and then um, um, creating ink out of them and painting them and creating messages back. So it's like this whole cycle. Um, so, okay. 
So I collect them and I, I, oftentimes I have to clean them, strain them. And so you see here, these are some of the leftover. Mm. So I still have to, as you can see, you can still see a little bit of um, colors and things like that. So, so I would take these um, debris and use it for another collage piece or stuff like that. Um, where's my, okay. So the way I make my ink is basically taking these ashes and adding um, a little bit of the gum arabic and water is typically like one ratio of gum arabic one ratio of water and then maybe like two of the um, ashes so the gum arabic acts as a binder like a glue and this one is pretty nice and neat I don't think I need to and a little bit of water. And gum arabic also, um, a lot of the watercolorists will use the gum arabic to um, add to their pigment. So it is, it is a water-based media. And um, you know, su surprisingly, I thought the the ashes would be uh, as dark uh, of a value, but they do. And if they're not, you can always sort of um, layer your painting again. So, for example, when this one here, it's it gets pretty dark. These are some of the um, quick kind of sketch paintings um, during quarantine time. The materials I burn, oh, Tisha. Hi, Tisha, how are you? Um, so they are, it's a paper mache ceremonials items. Um, if you guys ever been to like those oriental stores, sometimes you see these like really amazing decor of um, paper mache clothing or watch or shoes and things like that. Those are actually used um, as a an offering to the ancestors. So what we do is we would, you know, burn them um, in the hope that our ancestor would receive them. And so after the ceremony, I, I gather all the ashes and separate them, um, clean them, uh, so bigger debris will go into one little jar and the other, the, the cleaner ashes will go to another, and um, create ink out of them. So every year, my materials is limited to how much I'm going to just add a little bit more water, um, limited to how much, you know, ink I have. So this is also the reason why most of my paintings are a little bit smaller.
I like to know what you guys are doing during quarantine to keep yourself busy. Although it seems like Montgomery has a little bit more um, freedom in a way because I don't really think that we're in the state of quarantine any longer. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me, but um, I see lots of people out and about. I like to work in layers also. Uh, do those materials include just that paper? Yes, Tara. They do. In fact, I don't know if you can see my um, my typewriter, but I would oftentimes type my poetry onto those Joss paper. Um, without the ink, so the impression and pressure from the, the typewriter is the only way that those letters will surface. I guess you could say a little bit of my process um, draw from conceptual art. I do enjoy that. Um, I enjoy simplicity, I enjoy minimalist, um, and you know, when I was starting out, actually, I'm, uh, I'm classically trained, I, uh, <laughs> maybe that surprised some of you, oh, those lines, yes, um, so I'm, I'm classically trained, I was very much into realism, architectures and things like that. I was never, I love figures, but I was never um, figurative in my work. Maybe mostly it's the absence of the body. Um, you know, in figurative work, the body is so present and it's, it's uh, sometimes for me, it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the body is always there, it's always been under consideration, just never physically present. Um, I guess it's it's more a meditation of the body itself. Uh, this is yes, this is the cold press watercolor paper. Um, it's actually a watercolor block, and uh, it's a nice way to just kind of jot down your ideas. Most of these smaller paintings, I use them as reference. I, I don't typically um, show these, but but if others are interested, then of course, um, you know, I'd be happy to show them. Also, I'm not really used to like talking and painting at the same time, so I'm not sure how, how well this will turn out. <laughs> I'll probably... Um, work on it some more once we finish the session. This one here, yeah, uh, actually this one, uh, I'm just kind of continuing on my quarantine sketches. So a lot of these are ideas of um, isolation and a mean to connect um, these you know, the feelings of weightlessness sometimes, but then here it's presented as lightness. Um, I'm not sure how you guys are feeling when a few months ago, but um, for me, uh, I took it quite hard, actually. I, it, was, it was a little bit, um, I don't know, I never really experienced it before. And then with all the shows being closed and postponed, um, all the museums are, you know, closed. It really, there is not really of an escape other than, of course, your own studios and your piece of paper. So, so I, I try to keep busy and this is one of them. Um, and then I've been collecting eggshells because I have a big project in, in Los Angeles. 
Um, so, so, so that gardening, drawing, sketching, writing haiku, um, working on a few ideas, um, documenting the life of a rose. <laughs> The plan is to document all of the flowers in the garden, but um, before I finish this one, all the others has questions and um, if you would like to visit the studio in person sometimes do let me know um, I am open sometimes I'm here sometimes I'm at another studio uh, on Norman Bridge this one is on Carter Hill mm. Road um, but yes I welcome you all if you have any eggshells, <laughs> feel free to drop them off my house. Um, what else? Oh, yes. If you have Instagram, do follow me uh, at S-E-E-I-N-T-I-A. Uh, what else? And then next time I'll try not to say uh, way too much. <laughs> but thank you again so much for joining me and uh, joining the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, Artist Life. Okay, I'm about to take off this and switch off. Let's see, tap twice. Thank you again for joining me. Um, thank you, Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, for inviting me to be a part of this program. I think this is such a great idea, and uh, I love to learn more uh, of other artists. And, um, oh! Hi, Mike. See you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Ciao. Uh, I'm going to upload this to the IGTV so you can hear and replay my ums and ah. <laughs> and, um, and yes, please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, email me. Uh, my website is just cynthiakirana.com. And... And then, uh, yeah, stay safe. And um, I hope I get to see you all in person soon. Thank you, Laura. You've been amazing. Much love to you all. Bye.